Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to draw realistic fur in graphite. Now this is going to focus predominantly on how to draw black shiny fur because this is a black Labrador portrait that I did a couple of years ago. Throughout this video I'm going to be showing you my must-have graphite supplies starting off with the graphite powder which is my absolute favourite technique for applying that base layer and that's exactly what I'm doing here. My preferred way of applying that graphite to my paper is either using a blending stump or here I'm using an eye makeup applicator. You can also use these soft tools which are intended for pastels but they are far more expensive and I find these eye makeup applicators do exactly the same job. All I've done is dipped that in my graphite powder, I've then wiped off the excess on a normal piece of printer paper and then I'm applying it to my art paper. Now you can see here that there are a couple of occasions where the layer looks a little darker and all that is is I've just applied a second layer. Here in the corner are the two brands of graphite powder that I have purchased. Now I do like to have two options, I've got a lighter one which is about a HB and then I've got also something that's similar to a 6B. So here when I do want to work on dark fur I will be using more of the darker graphite powder to get a slightly darker base layer but you can also make your own. Now all I've got here is a piece of 320 grit sandpaper, just taped it down here to my desk and then I've got a normal graphite, um, the 6B lead. Now this works really well for graphite powder and of course here it works perfectly well for your dark details as well. But let's say you just need to get some graphite powder that's a little bit darker than the stuff that you might have. All I would recommend is to actually sand down some of your graphite. You can see here, because it's such a soft lead, you're getting quite a lot of graphite and not using much of your pencil at all. Now, the really good thing about this technique is if you go with small round circular movements as I am here, you're not having to actually ruin the pencil itself. You'll just sharpen it to get a nice finer point. But look at all the graphite powder that you have now got. So this technique here works really well, but I would make sure that you always go in small circular movements. And if you look at the writing on this lead, it's always shifting back and forth, rolling between my fingers. What this is doing is keeping that really nice point so that I don't then have to waste time resharpening this. All I would then recommend is with this graphite powder, because as you can see, it builds up nice and quickly, is buy yourself some little plastic containers and just tip the excess here off of the sandpaper into these small pots. By doing that, you can then end up with a really nice amount of graphite powder. You can then just use your blending stumps. And what I do is just put a tip the little bit of this graphite powder on a spare bit of tracing paper. And then I can easily just dab that with my blending stumps and then apply it to my paper. Okay, so now we've got the base layer in, it's about building up our details. Now for this portrait, I decided to use my Derwent graphic pencils because they're a slightly softer lead. And what I start to do is build up that fur direction. Now I'm not focusing on my darkest values right from the very beginning. I do need to save those for my additional layers. But what I am doing is starting off with something like a HB and building up from there. So I'll then progress up to a 2B, then a 4B and a 6B and so on until I get the right level of contrast. If we jump into using our darkest pencils first, there are two things that are gonna happen. One, you won't have the same depth in the fur and therefore it won't be as realistic. And two, you will end up with some graphite shine. Now, some artists aren't bothered by that and it doesn't really phase me too much, but I don't want to make it any worse. So therefore I wanna make sure I'm a bit more careful with my darker pencils for those earlier layers. The darker the pencil early on, especially if you're applying more pressure to that pencil, you do have a tendency to get more of that graphite shine. So as I start to build up my layers with my graphite pencils there are three things that I start to think about. The fur direction, the fur length and the fur thickness. So before we go into that part of the tutorial I would just like to ask if the tips and techniques that I've shared so far are useful I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up. It really helps and then it will tell YouTube that it's a video that people are interested in so they are more likely to share it to other people. Okay, so onto that fur direction. So you can see with this eye makeup applicator that I have still dragged that over in following that fur direction that I can see in that reference photo. By doing that for the very first layer, even before we pick up a graphite pencil, it will help to you know, encourage our brain to follow that reference photo as closely as possible.
You'll also notice that I'm really focusing on the shine of the fur already. I've started to get my darker sections in first and leave in those lighter highlights. But the important thing here is, even though there are the lighter sections of fur, I've still got a very light layer of graphite powder. It's nowhere near as white as the white paper on the background. Quite often, the brightest part of a portrait is going to be the reflections in the eye or the tiny little details on the nose. The shine on any black fur is not going to be the brightest part. So even though it looks lighter, it's never going to be pure white. So I'd always recommend to still put a light layer of the graphite powder down for those lighter sections of the shiny fur. Then what I'm starting to do with my lighter pencil, so I will usually typically start with something like a 2H and work my way up to a HB, I'm starting to map in my lighter type of fur first. Then I'm going to be building up my darker values from there. Whilst I'm doing that, I'm paying really close attention to the fur length and fur thickness. Both of these are, they, they sort of like go together. So for a Labrador, you want that shorter fur texture, but you don't want it so short that your pencil strokes are replicating something like a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. A Labrador has got a slightly longer fur coat than that. But again, you don't then want to be making the pencil strokes too long and they end up with a texture like a Golden Retriever or a German Shepherd. When you're starting to build these details, don't put too much pressure on that pencil. You don't want to be burnishing that paper and sort of flattening the tooth of that surface. What happens then is you're going to be very limited with how many more layers you can put on the paper, which means you're going to have a less depth in the fur and therefore potentially less realism. So you want to make sure that you've always got sufficient tooth of the paper left. And if you do want to burnish, that you save that to that very last layer when you know you're not going to have to be adding any more on top. So this is one of the main sections on the portrait, especially on the face, where I'm focusing on that darker fur rather than the highlights in the shine. You'll notice that I'm building up those values really gradually. I'm also starting to work with a bit more of a sharper pencil. Now, the sharpness of the point of the pencil is going to vary depending on the fur texture. If you want something softer, a blunter pencil is going to be more of that preference. If you're wanting finer details, you're going to be required to have a slightly sharper point to the pencil. But never do I really work with something that is super, super sharp. I still want there to be a slight curve at the end. That's just going to help to soften out the very edges of that detail rather than making them look more like indentations. So when I'm moving the pencil here, building up this darker fur, I am always looking back at my reference photo. At this time, I'll be spending more time looking at that reference photo than I will the drawing, just to make sure that I've got the fur direction here accurate. Now the fur direction should be accurate with any part of the portrait, but on the side of the face here, I think it's more noticeable when it's incorrect. When I first started doing pet portraits, I had a tendency of making the fur here very flat, whereas at the moment you can see it's starting to curve over the top of the eye and then down towards the lower right corner. What I used to do is actually have it coming around the eye and then travelling more across to the right side of the paper, not down towards the lower corner. What happens then is you actually make the animal's face appear very wide because you don't have that curve. The fur direction is crucial. And then the same will happen if you go with the other way. So if let's say you slope that fur down too much and it's more down towards the lower edge of the paper, then you're going to make the animal's face look very narrow. And this is also very apparent on the bridge of the nose. There is a lot of fur direction changes here. So I want to make sure that I'm focusing on very small areas and that I'm getting each area accurate. Notice how it is a very exaggerated change of direction right on the middle of the nose. This here is because this lovely Labrador had like a ridge in the fur. It's very unique to her, so I wanted to make sure that I got that accurate. I am using here my Tombow Mono Eraser. It's a really nice eraser to work with because it's a very narrow uh, rubber, so you're able to then get nice fine lines. I'm using that to remove some of that graphite and then add what looks like lighter pencil strokes, but all I'm doing is subtracting that graphite from the paper. This technique with working with adding your details with your pencils and then removing them with the eraser is a really good technique of building more depth within your fur, regardless of the colour of the animal that you're working on. Now that we're gradually getting more of her face in the portrait, you can see that I've got a nice variety of the fur length with those pencil strokes. The fur on the top of the head looks slightly longer than the fur on the bridge of the nose and below the eyes. This is really going to help with that fur texture. 
Then, as I start to work down towards the nose, look at how the pencil strokes start to get slightly shorter, but it's a gradual transition. When I start to work with those details that are very close to the top of the nose, you know, they're barely one or two millimeters long. In some cases, depending on the subject that you're drawing, you might actually only have to draw dots there to indicate at the fur texture rather than individual lines. Now something this portrait is demonstrating very clearly is that I like to work in small sections. The only reason why I'm mapping in this entire base layer for the ear is because the shine in the ear was very transitional. So the highlights and the shadows were a bit more of a larger area compared to under the eye for instance. All of those shadows and highlights were smaller, whereas on the ear, because it's a larger surface area, I wanted to make sure that I had my nice transitions from my lights and my darks and that there wasn't any harsh start and stop points. Now when you're working on the shine of a coat, regardless of the colour of the animal, you are going to want to make sure that you don't have those harsh start and stop points because it's going to be very hard to then overlap those subtle details that transition from those lights and darks. However, the principles are the same as what's been shown throughout this tutorial. I'm focusing on the fur length, fur direction and fur thickness. Notice though, over these lighter areas that I'm currently working on, the details do not look as dark and that's because I'm intentionally now using lighter pencils like the 2H, the H and the HB. Although I did do the base layer as one layer at a time, notice now that I'm working with those details and my pencils, I'm still now focusing on only a couple of square inches at one time. I do think this is really important, especially when you're working on an ear like this. The ears are going to have many structures that are going to create some bumps and they're also going to create some dips. I want to make sure that I've replicated that and that's all going to happen with that fur direction. And I do know that I'm very guilty of the fact that if I work in whole set layers, so if I was to do one solid layer of detail and then the next darker layer and again and so on, I know that I would potentially miss out these changes of direction. What then happens is the ear will look flatter. So I really want to avoid that. So as we are progressing through this, the one thing that I want to really mention and really emphasize is the importance of the contrast. Now, this is something that I talk a lot about on every single YouTube tutorial, regardless of the medium. And this is more apparent when I'm working on a black animal. So any type of black fur. One of the most common mistakes is that we're worried about going too dark in case we can't lighten it back up again. And I do totally understand that. But the problem with that is you will end up with a dog that looks grey rather than black. So ultimately it won't look like that person's pet, which of course is really not what we want. So we have to make sure that we are building up our darker values and that the contrast is good. Now this was exaggerated slightly with this Labrador because she had such a strong shine on the coat. So they're very, you know, there's a nice variation of her highlights and the shadows. But that was why I really focused on it for this portrait because if I didn't get that right, it just really wouldn't have done the portrait and the reference photo any justice at all. However, as you've seen with this layering process, I have worked from light to dark. I haven't put my darkest pencils down first and then tried erasing my lighter details on top. That does become very stressful and it's very frustrating. There are only going to be so much of that graphite that you're going to have to be able to remove. You know, you're not ever going to be able to get it back to the white paper that it was before. So I do always like to err on the side of caution and I put in my lighter colours first and then I build up those darker pencils. So as I'm just going to continue this layering process on the ear, I just want to speak about paper. Now this again is something that's really important. The paper can be a real deal breaker. You might be struggling with any medium and it might not be the techniques that you're using. It could just be that the paper won't allow for those techniques and the effect that you're trying to create. I have tried many different papers and the one that I have preferred and that I've stuck to for the last few years for my graphite pieces is the Strathmore. Now I use the Bristol Vellum or the Smooth, it depends on the portrait that I'm after. For this I use the Vellum. The reason being it's still got a little bit of texture so it does grip the, the um, graphite pigment but it's not too textured where you can then see the little bumps and tooth of the paper through your details. 
If the paper is too textured and it does have too much tooth, you will struggle to fit all of that graphite in those little dips and little valleys of the paper. So I do want something that's a little bit in between. Now also what can happen if you're working on something like a cold pressed watercolour paper, that's very textured. Your details will then look like they've got little bumps in them. They won't look like smoother lines. So again, that's something for me personally that I don't like to see in my artwork, which is why I go with a smoother option. However, that being said, the paper choice is all going to be just unique to that artist. You know, there's no right or wrong answer. Like with any art supplies, there's no right or wrong technique. As long as you're creating the art that you're happy with, that is the main thing. But if you do find that the details are not as smooth and you are getting that grainy appearance through the paper showing through with that graphite, then it might be because you're working with a paper that's a little bit too rough. The next trickier section of any dog portrait is the muzzle. Now the fur direction, again, like on the bridge of the nose, can shift and change in many directions. It's gonna depend massively on the breed. But for a Labrador, it's a little bit more uniformed and followed more of a structure. You still wanna make sure though that each detail you draw has a slight curve to it. You'll notice if you look here at the face, there's not one de detail that is straight from the start of the pencil stroke to the end. The middle section of each stroke still has a slight curve. Now depending on the way that that fur is traveling and the way that it is directed, you're gonna have that curve going either towards the left or the right, but again, that is gonna be very subjective to that reference photo. Zoom into where, wherever it is that you're working from and make sure that you're studying that as closely as you can. Just like the bridge of the nose, I don't want these pencil strokes here to be as long as the fur that's on the top of the head and the right ear. So I do wanna make sure that I've shortened those pencil strokes to show the difference in fur texture. Now again, it's really important here that I'm indicating at the structures under the skin. So I have to make sure that my lights and my darks are in the right place. So the area here that I'm working on, this is actually where the side of the muzzle is joining onto the side of the face. So I have to make sure that I've curved these highlights in the right way. This is also where the whiskers are gonna be drawn eventually, but I need to make sure that I leave those till the last layer. Now that's my personal preference and the way that I like to do them. You can of course, sort of outline the whiskers and draw around them so you're always leaving the white of the paper there but I do find that whiskers can potentially look a little fake and staged when they do that because you have a tendency then to outline them but again there's no right or wrong answer. Something that's really important as well to consider with whiskers is not all dogs have white whiskers. So quite often the black Labrador is gonna have black whiskers. I would still recommend to leave those whiskers until the last layer because we don't wanna then have to draw around them. If we draw those in first and then we're layering the fur over the top, you do have a tendency of actually softening the edges of the whiskers. What happens then is those whiskers don't look like they're sitting on top and at front, which is obviously what they, they are doing. They are overlapping all of the fur that is behind it. So therefore, for me, it makes sense that they are the last thing that gets added to the portrait. And with the whiskers being the last details, this is the part of the portrait where it's pretty much done, where I take a step back from my easel and even sometimes put that artwork away for a day or two so that I can then look at it with fresh eyes. Quite often we will spend days, many, many hours working on one portrait and we can then get a little bit blinded by the details and not notice things that should be changed or improved. And sometimes it might only be a couple of alterations, but they can make a real difference to the end piece. So again, I really hope this tutorial was of use, that the tips and techniques that I've shared here, you can then implement in your own work. If you've got any art related questions, pop them in the comments below because I am more than happy to help if I can. And as I say, liking this video, sharing it is really beneficial. I really do appreciate it if you could do that, just so then YouTube can share it on and pass it on to others. And here is the two portraits that I was commissioned to do, one of course of the Labrador featured in this video and the other of their Jack Russell. Now I do have the footage for that Jack Russell, so if you would like me to create a tutorial of that one as well, showing you how I layer that type of fur because it is significantly different, then do let me know in the comments below. I am more than happy to do that as well. If you liked this video and you wanna keep updated with the content that I upload, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. I'm gonna be uploading another video to YouTube at the weekend. This is gonna be either pastels or acrylics this time. And as always, thank you so much for watching.